For this video, we're going to see how to create a custom fiscal calendar. And when I say custom, I mean a fiscal calendar that doesn't start in January, so any other month. As you can see in this calendar, our fiscal year starts in October, so even though the date is 2021, I want the fiscal year to be the next fiscal year. That's the start for 2022. This should also be the first quarter and considered the first month within the fiscal year. Now there's a lot of different ways to create custom calendars that deal with fiscal years, and there are just as many techniques as there are use cases. In this video, I want to keep things as simple as possible. So consider this a video just as a starter to get you to a point where you can start creating more elaborate custom fiscal calendars. For our custom fiscal calendar in Power BI, much of what we're going to build is going to be possible by use of the eDate function. eDate is an incredibly simple function. You feed it a date, and then you tell it a certain number of months to go into the future. So for example, if I were to say eDate, and I gave it a date column of a sales table, and told it three, it would push whatever date three months into the future. So January 1st would become April 1st, but October 1st would become January 1st. Here's a cheat list of the values you would use if you wanted a specific month to become the first month in a fiscal calendar. So if we wanted October to be our first month, we would push everything three months into the future. Likewise, if you wanted April to be your first month in the fiscal year, you would push everything nine months into the future. Now this sounds a little weird, but when you see it in practice, hopefully it'll make sense. To calculate the fiscal year, we'll use the e-date to take a date and push it a certain number of months into the future. But the only part of that date that we want is the year, so we'll wrap the whole thing in a year function. So for example, we could take the date field of a sales table, push it three months into the future using e-date, but then just extract the year from that date. So if we started in October and pushed it three months into the future, we'd end up extracting the next year's date. So October of 2021 would actually become January of 2022, but the only part we'd keep is the 2022. For fiscal quarter, same thing. We'll use e-date, feed it a date, go a certain number of months in the future, but only calculate the quarter. So for example, in this case, taking that same date field of a sales table, pushing it three months into the future using e-date, and then calculating the quarter. So if this was October, which would normally be the fourth quarter, and you went three months into the future, you'd end up in January, which is the first quarter. But you'd only keep the one, not any reference to the month October. Here's the same thing for month, using e-date to push a date three months into the future, but then only capturing the month portion. So if we were using October, which is 10, and we went three months into the future, we'd land in January, which is one. So then October would be associated with one instead of 10. I'm going to show you several techniques for creating a custom fiscal calendar, from the easiest to the more complex. We'll start with something simple like Calendar Auto, which will generate the entire calendar for us, but it lacks some of the flexibility of being able to create a custom date range. Now, Calendar Auto by itself will not allow you to create a custom fiscal calendar, but Calendar Auto does have an argument you can feed it for a custom fiscal year. We could also use the calendar function to define a specific start date and end date. These can be either hard-coded or dynamically discovered using functions. We'll also see how to perform a semi-discovered start and end date. That term will make sense when we get to the lab. Let's look at all the functions we're going to create ahead of time just so we can see what we're getting into, but we'll dissect each of these as we go along. So to create the initial fiscal calendar, we're going to use a calendar function and we're going to use this. Now it looks a little bit daunting, but once you break it down and you understand what the elements do, it actually makes pretty decent sense and it's not that difficult. We'll calculate what the actual year is, but then I'll show you how to calculate the fiscal year. Same thing for the quarters. We'll see what the actual quarter is, but then we'll see what the calculated fiscal quarter is. Same thing for the months. We'll look at the actual month number, but then we'll look at a calculated fiscal month number. And just so that our reports look very nice, we'll create some custom formats for those months where we can show it in either a short month format or a long month format. Everything we're about to do is downloadable using the link in the video description. I've got the starter file and the completed file for Power BI, along with notes for all of these formulas. Our journey begins here with a tab delimited text file. We've got four columns of information, the sale date, the account number, the department, and the amount. And there are 10,000 rows of information. Our data starts in May of 2021, but also ends in May of 2023. Here we are in Power BI in the table view. I've used Power Query to bring that tab delimited data into our data model, and I performed some very minimal processing on it. Other than setting proper data types, I really didn't do anything with this data. But now let's create a calendar table. It's considered a best practice that if you have a column of dates anywhere in any table of your data model, you need to create a calendar table. The calendar table is the best way to manage date-based information. 
Now there are a lot of ways to create calendar tables. I'm not going to cover all of them. So for this video, we're gonna create the calendar table directly in the data model. We'll start by going to the home ribbon and then going up to new table. And we need to give this table a name. It would only make sense to call it calendar. Now, if you're in a hurry and you don't want anything fancy, one of the fastest ways to build a calendar table is to use the calendar auto function. If you specify no arguments and just hit enter, the calendar function will scan your entire data model looking at every date-based field. It will find the oldest date in your data model, let that be the start of the calendar, and the most recent date found in your data model will become the last date in your calendar. Calendar tables like complete years, so if your data does not begin on January 1st or end on December 31st, it will create those missing dates. That way you always have complete years. Our data started and ended in May, but our calendar starts on January 1st of 2021, and it ends on December 31st of 2023. One of the big negatives of using calendar auto, even though it's very easy, if you have older date-based fields in your data model like birth dates, and maybe one of those birth dates goes back into the 1950s, your sales may have only started in the last few years, like in this case, 2021. The calendar auto function will build a calendar table from the oldest to the newest date. So if our oldest date is a birth date in the 1950s, we would potentially have 70 years worth of dates that would have no use in any report. This is why it's usually best to define the start and end date of your calendar table. Now, before we leave calendar auto, I will tell you there is an optional argument, which is to define the end of the fiscal year. So if our fiscal year started in October, which is the 10th month, I could put nine in here to denote September. And when I hit enter, notice my fiscal year starts October 1st. So you can do a little bit of fiscal adjustment here, but that's about it. Let's use something a little more sophisticated. Instead of using the calendar auto function, we'll use instead the calendar function. Now the calendar function has two arguments, a start date and an end date. As stated before, your calendar should be complete years. So even though technically you could start with the first date of the first sale to the last date of the last sale, it's always best to start with January 1st and go through December 31st. But you can't just type in something like January 1st, 2024. Instead, you have to construct a date. So we're going to use a date function and the date function has three parts, a year, a month, and a day. So just to keep it simple at first, our sales started in 2021, and we want our calendar to begin on January 1st. That defines the start date, and for the end date, we'll use another date function to construct a second date, and since our sales ended in 2023, that will be our year, the month will be December, and the day will be the 31st. Close parentheses for the date, close parentheses for the calendar, hit enter, and now we have that same list of dates but they're under our control. Now let's make this even better because if you come up to 2024 and start having sales, you're going to have to go and adjust your calendar with a new end date. So instead of having these dates be hard coded, what if they could be discovered? So let's take the start date out. Let's take the end date out. We can discover when the first sale occurred by using a function called first date. And first date just needs a list of dates. So if we feed it the sales data table and give it the date field, it will discover the first date. Same thing for the last date, we can use a last date function and then feed it the sales data table with the sale date field. Close parentheses for calendar, hit enter, and you can see it discovered that the oldest date was May 9th of 2021 and the newest date was May 9th of 2023. But I said we want to have complete years. We want to start at January 1st, we want to end at December 31st. So if we could discover the oldest date and just capture the year, we could then feed that into a date function to construct our own beginning date. So we'll take the first date function, which discovered May 9th, 2021, and we'll wrap that in a year function. So at the moment, the only element in the start date argument for calendar is the year 2021. We need to take that and wrap it inside of a date function. And now that we have the oldest year, we could just hard code in the month for January, and the date for the first. Close parentheses. So the date, year, and first date functions are all being used to calculate the oldest sale date, but only within the sale date field, not within the entire data model. Let's use this same idea on the last date field. We've discovered the oldest date, May 9th of 2023, but we're going to extract the year from that date and use that as the year component of a date function. So now that we've discovered the year, now we'll give it the month, December, and the day, the 31st. Close parentheses for the date function, close parentheses for the entire calendar. Hit enter, and now we have our own custom calendar which starts on January 1st of the oldest year's sale, 
and goes all the way through December 31st of the newest year's sale. Now, all of this can be a little intimidating. So here's one of the things I like to do with my DAX formulas. I like to format them. We'll highlight this formula, control C to copy, and then we'll open our web browser and go to daxformatter.com. I run almost every one of my DAX formulas through this website so I can make them pretty. And when I say pretty, I mean easy to read and understandable. I'll click here on the web page, do a control V for paste. I'll paste this ugly DAX formula, click format, and get this beautiful DAX formula. Now I can hit copy, go back to Power BI, erase the old formula, and paste in the new formula. Now I've got my magnification increased so you can read these formulas better, but I'm certain if you do this on your screen, it's going to look even better than this. Selecting the date field, I'll do a little bit of formatting here. I don't need a date time data type, I'll just set that to date. And I don't need the day of the week here, so I'm gonna change my formatting to only show the month, day, and year. Now that we have the basis for our custom calendar, let's create additional columns that will show the year, the quarter, the month number, but then also the adjusted fiscal year, fiscal quarter, and fiscal month number. We'll start with just a normal column for year. I'll go up and click new column. The name of this column will be year, and we'll use a year function to just point to this calendar table's date field. Close parentheses, hit enter, and we've got the year. Now notice that January 1st, 2021, the year is 2021, but all the way to the end in 2023, December is still 2023. So every date is still being reflected in their normal year. But let's create a new column and we'll call this fiscal year, F year. This is going to use the same year function, but we're going to use the E date function and tell it to look at the current date, which would be the calendar's date table, but then push it three months into the future. So close parentheses for year, hit enter. January, 2021 is still 2021. And as we scroll down, when we get into September, 2021 is still 2021, but look what happens when we enter October. As soon as we hit October of 2021, our fiscal year is pushed into 2022 because all we did was take October 1st, 2021 and push that three months into the future, but only capture the year. So technically we actually pushed that to January 1st, 2021, but our limited perspective is just seeing the year. Now let's do the same thing for quarters. We'll go up to new column. We'll calculate the normal quarter. We'll call it quarter. And we're going to use a quarter function to just point to the calendar table's date field. Close parentheses, hit enter. January 1st is in quarter one. If we scroll all the way down to December, December 31st is quarter four. And then January 1st of the next year restarts the quarter one. But now let's create a fiscal quarter. We'll start a new column. I'll call it F quarter. And this will use the quarter function, but we're going to feed it an adjusted date. And E date is going to make that adjustment. So E date will take the calendar tables date field, push it into the future three months, feed that to a quarter function, and quarter will calculate that quarter. So January is getting pushed to April, which is the second quarter, but we only keep the quarter portion. Scrolling down, you can see that September's normal quarter is the third quarter, but it's being perceived as the fourth. And October, its fourth quarter, is now being perceived as the first because October was pushed to January. But we don't know it's January because the only thing we can see is the quarter number. Now, I like to put Qs in front of these. That way, when I put them in the report, it'll say Q1 through Q4. So I'll go back to the quarter function and I'll just concatenate a Q to the front of this formula. And now it says Q1 through Q4. I'll do the same thing for F quarter. I'll concatenate a Q into the front of that. These will end up looking better in the report. You could even put QTR if you wish. Now let's calculate the normal month number, new column. I'll call this one month, and we're going to use a month function to point to the calendar table's date field, and that will extract the month number. So January is one, December is 12, and you can see the next year's January restarts with one. But now let's create a fiscal month. So we'll start a new column. I'll call it F month, and we're going to use a month function, but the date is going to be an adjusted date, adjusted by the E date function. This will use the date field, but push it three months into the future. Normally January would be in the first month. Now it's being perceived as in the fourth month because if our fiscal year starts in October, October will be the first month, November the second, December the third, January the fourth. We'll scroll down to the September, October timeframe. And you can see that September is normally perceived as the ninth month, but our fiscal month is perceiving it as the 12th. October 1st is the 10th month, but it is being perceived as the first month in the fiscal calendar. 
Now, this is as far as we need to really take it in terms of fiscal calculations, but I don't want to put numbers 1 through 12 in my reports because people aren't going to understand what those mean. So just as a little bonus, let's create some columns that display the short name and the long name versions of the months. So we'll start a new column. I'll call this short month, and we're going to use a format function to feed the calendar table's date field, but then use the 3M code sequence for the formatting. Close parentheses, hit enter, and now we get the three letter abbreviation for the months. I'll go to new column. We'll create one more column called long month, and this will use the format function to feed the calendar table's date field with a 4M code formatting instruction, and this will give us the full month spelled out. Now that we've got our fiscal calendar constructed, let's build a visual to test it. The first thing I want to do is make it so that certain columns cannot be used in visuals. Like I don't want the month columns to be used in visuals, I want the month names to be used in those visuals. Likewise, I wouldn't want the original full date to be used in a visual. So we'll go over here to the right to the calendar table's entry list. And notice when you hover over an entry, you can see an icon that looks like an eye. That means that that field is visible and usable in visualizations. I'm going to go to the date field and I don't want that to be used in an actual visualization. So I'm going to click the icon that will put a slash and tell me that that field is hidden. Likewise for the fiscal month and the normal month because I don't want those fields used in visuals. Looking at the sales data table, same thing. I don't want the original sale date field to ever be used in a visual, and I don't want the amount field to be used either because I've created a measure that will calculate total sales. So that way these would be explicit calculations instead of implicit calculations. Now you could do other things with these fields, like for the year field, if I ever put this in a visual, I don't want it to be aggregated. So on the column tools ribbon, I will change the default summarization to don't summarize. In fact, you'd probably want to set all of these to don't summarize. So I'll do that for fiscal year. I'll set that to don't summarize and fiscal month, don't summarize. Since I only want to use the fiscal versions of the year, month, and quarters, I should also go ahead and hide the normal quarter and year. Let's go to the report view. Now it's time to build a visual. I'll start with a table. Let me go ahead and stretch this out. Now, in order for this to make perfect sense, I'm going to reverse something I did just a moment ago. I want to actually be able to show the normal calendar day as you would read it on a calendar. So I'm going to go back into the table view and I'm going to unhide this date field. Go back to the report view and this way I can add that date field to my table. Now before we add our extra fields, I want to pull this down a little bit just so I can work with the visual a little bit easier. We'll go add the fiscal year. We can see January 1st of 2021 is in fiscal year 2021, but if we scroll down to the end of September, September 2021 is in fiscal year 2021, but October 2021 is in fiscal year 2022. Let's add fiscal quarter. We can see that September is in the fourth quarter, but October begins quarter one of the new fiscal year. I want to see the month number, so I'm going to go back to the data view, unhide my fiscal month field, go back to the visual, and I'm going to add fiscal month. We can see September's fiscal month is 12, October's fiscal month is 1. And then I'll also add the long month just so we can see the full month name. There are dozens and dozens of elements you can add to a calendar table. This video is meant to just keep it simple, focusing on just the fiscal years, the fiscal quarters, and the fiscal months. If you get into calendars like 445 calendars or 454 calendars, that's a whole nother conversation. So as long as you're not doing anything exotic, this should work just fine for you. Don't forget to download all these files from the link in the video description. We've got the starter file, the solution file, and documentation for all of the formulas. And if you have any questions about this, put it down in the comments and I'll help as best I can. Thank you for watching. And remember, BCTI, the learning never stops.